Slight disclaimer. Today's children's message is one that really works best interactively with several children. So if you're watching this one at home, play along as best you can. And I'll sort of simulate what would happen if I had a real group of kids with me. The cat will stand in for some of the children. Right, Fiona? All right, play along. Hello, children of God. I need some helpers today. Who would like to volunteer to give me a hand? Oh, of course you would, Fiona. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this glass cleaner. She doesn't look thrilled with this assignment. And I want you to go over to that window and scrub it down for a little. Just go way over there, scrub down the window, and I'll keep going. Don't worry about it. I'll call you back when I'm done. Thank you. All right, now, next volunteer, you. You are going to take these candies, go to the back row of the church way over there, and I want you to give one of these candies to everyone in that row. They'll enjoy it during the sermon. Thank you. All right, and you, yes, one more volunteer. So I want you to go over into that back corner and sing the alphabet song. If you get finished, sing it there again. Wait till I call you back. All right, awesome. Now, for the rest of you, I am going to tell you a story from the Bible. Today's story has to do with two sisters. Their names were Mary and Martha, and they lived in a town called Bethany. They also had a brother, his name was Lazarus. And yes, it was that same Lazarus that Jesus raised from the dead, but that's another story, not really part of what's happening today. Anyway, Jesus and his disciples had come to Mary and Martha's house, and he actually came over to spend some time and have dinner while they were cooking and getting ready, and I think our friends are done. You ready to call them back? All right, guys, come back on up here. Thank you. Did you get all those candies delivered? Fantastic. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions. I didn't tell the whole story yet. I didn't quite have time to get through it, but I want to know what you can remember from what I just told you. So, who remembers the names of the sisters that I just mentioned in this story? That's right, Mary and Martha. Now, did anyone catch that brother of theirs that I talked about a little bit? Yes, that was Lazarus. Now, they were living in a place, I barely mentioned this, so you might not remember. Yes, it was called Bethany. Now, who had an easier time remembering the details of that story? The people who were listening here or the people who are out there doing chores for me? Well, hopefully if all goes as planned. That's right. The people who were sitting here at my feet listening were much better equipped to answer questions because they could really hear and take in what I was saying. If you were wiping windows or handing out candy or singing, made it a little bit tougher to even hear, much less understand or remember the things that I said. Now, that might seem obvious, but the same thing happened in our Bible story today. So for those of you who didn't catch it the first time around, the story today involves two sisters named Martha and Mary. And Jesus went to their house and Martha was getting everything ready for this big party. Because it wasn't just Jesus, it was him and his whole disciple crew and probably some other people as well. I assume Martha was a good cook, so people probably came to enjoy her hospitality. Well, Martha was busy getting ready. She was cleaning, she was cooking, she was doing all the chores in the house. And Mary, her sister, was just sitting there, sitting there at Jesus' feet, listening to him teach. Which usually in those days, women, unfortunately, didn't get to do as much as men. But Mary knew that Jesus was someone very special. So she was listening to him. And the disciples were there too. Well, Martha, getting overwhelmed with the cooking, finally came in and said, Jesus, do something about this. Look at my sister just sitting there like a lazy person. Can't you tell her to get up and help me? I need more hands in the kitchen. The food will never be ready. And Jesus said to Martha, 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 calm down. Well, he didn't exactly say calm down, but maybe he did. He said, 
You're worried about a lot of things. You're busy doing a lot of things. But that doesn't matter as much as spending time with me. Mary has chosen what's right. She knows that it's important to sit and listen to me. Don't be upset that she wants to spend time with me. Well, sometimes Martha gets a bad rap and people tend to think, ha, she was just too busy. It wasn't that Martha was doing anything wrong necessarily. Someone had to cook for Jesus, but she was too upset and worried and focused on just the details of the meal. Mary was focused on Jesus. We want to remember that in our lives, we want to focus on Jesus. It's okay to do things and to be involved with activities, but when we're so busy running around and doing things, even doing things for God, well, it's not the same as sitting and spending time with God. Jesus wants us to know that he loves us no matter what. He loves us because he made us. He died for us because he loves us, just because of who we are. It doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter how great of a sports player or a student or whatever it is you are, you are. What matters is that you're a child of God and he wants us to be with him, to spend time with him. The more we spend time with God, the better we can listen to him, to know what he says and what he wants and what he wants for us. We can do all sorts of activities. We can do things to serve him. That's okay, but that's not what saves us, what heals us. It doesn't make us more loved by God because we're doing stuff. God already loves us. We want to love him in return. So when we spend time in prayer, reading God's word, going to church, that's spending time with God. That's listening to him, understanding more of his teaching and who he is and who he wants us to be. Jesus loves you for you no matter what you do. So, even when things need done, and things feel hectic and crazy, remember to take time for Jesus, to take time to sit at his feet and just rest in him. It might not sound easy to just listen to him, but it's the most rewarding thing that you can do. And it will remind you that Jesus loves you, no matter what. So take a deep breath. Take some time and pray. Why don't we do that right now? Dear God, thank you for loving us no matter what. Help us to take time for you, to listen for your voice and know what you say. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, when you're feeling all busy, remember, take time to sit at the master's feet. Hopefully, this is another idea that can help you communicate this story and an important truth. Jesus loves you because you're a human being, not a human doing. Come back again because we have new messages every week and new craft ideas if you'd like those as well, which hopefully will bless you and your ministry, wherever and with whomever it might be. Have a wonderful week. Go make some disciples. See you next time.